You know what I love? Diagonal matrices. Imagine you're waking up and you're getting into your math problem of the day and you see a matrix and it's a diagonal matrix. Mm, that is a good start to a day. Let me tell you why. A diagonal matrix is one where along the main diagonal there can be all sorts of whatever numbers you like, but that everywhere else, everywhere off of that main diagonal, you just have zeros. So for example, I might have the matrix D, I'll do a 4x4 four four case, where along the main diagonal you have some numbers, like how about 1 and 1 and 2 and 0, just some collection of numbers along that main diagonal, but that everywhere else in your matrix is just going to be zeros. So why do I like diagonal matrices so much? Well, the idea is basically every computation that I could do in linear algebra is almost completely trivial if I have a diagonal matrix. So, for example, let me suppose that what I'm interested in solving is a system, this matrix D times the arbitrary vector x1, x2, x3, x4, and I'm going to set it equal to just any column vector that I'm going to make up, how about 3, 1, 4, 0? Well, how can we solve this system? The diagonal matrix times a vector is really easy. It's just going to be that first component 1 multiplied by the x1. So this is just going to be, well, 1 times x1, then 1 times x2, then 2 times x3, so 2x3, and 0 times x4. As in, the multiplication of a diagonal with a vector is just really trivial. You just take the vector and you multiply it by the four different diagonal elements. And then if I want to compare these, I can immediately therefore get that my x1 is equal to this value of 3, looking up over here. I can get that my x2 is equal to 1. I can get that 2x3 is equal to 4. So in other words, x3 is 4 divided by 2 or 2. And then... 0x4 is equal to 0. I have to be a little bit careful here. My x4 is effectively free, and I can get at any value s. Any value times 0 is going to be equal to 0. So there we go. I have my solutions. Easy peasy. So solving linear systems, this thing that we spent a whole bunch of time on, is pretty much trivial if you've got a diagonal matrix. Let's continue. Suppose I've got this matrix here, and I want to figure out what is the rank of this particular matrix D. And then you'll recall that the rank is going to be defined to be the number of columns with leading ones. And in this case, we've got one free column of all zeros, and then we've got three that have something non-zero. I could divide the two and make it a one if I wanted to. Three leading ones. So I can just come here and say that it's equal to three. I don't have to do any computation. I just look at the number of non-zeros on the diagonal. So doing anything with rank is going to be completely trivial. Let's carry on and see what else we can do. Now let me suppose that I want to figure out the eigenvalues to a diagonal matrix. Remember that the eigenvalues are all about the determinant of d minus lambda i. So let's do that. I want to figure out the determinant, not of a this time, I'm calling it d, but, but nonetheless d minus lambda i. And what that's going to be in our specific example, I have to remind myself what it actually was, all right, there it is, is going to be 1 minus lambda, 1 minus lambda, 2 minus lambda, and then finally the minus lambda down at the bottom. And then what I'll have to do is just write a really big fat zero in the off diagonals because I don't want to fill them in, so I just denote this big zero to say everything over there is going to be zero. And finally, I'll put the vertical bars, which denote taking a determinant of this thing. Well, this is a diagonal matrix, and we've already seen that even for just upper triangular matrices, that the determinant is just going to be the product of those diagonal factors. For sure, a diagonal is also upper triangular. And so we can indeed just say that it's going to be 1 minus lambda, looks like they've got a squared, a 2 minus lambda, and then finally a minus lambda. So if I think about what this equation would do generically, not just for my specific example, the eigenvalues 
with their multiplicities are just whatever those diagonal elements are. Indeed, for this specific example, if I was to set it equal to zero, I would get a lambda is equal to zero, I would get a lambda is equal to two, and I would get a lambda equal to one with this multiplicity two because of the exponent. Do I need to continue? We could. Uh, basically everything that we're doing in linear algebra is completely trivial for these diagonal matrices, and so we're gonna really like diagonal matrices. But what happens if our matrix is not diagonal? We really want it to be a diagonal, but but perhaps it's not. However, we've seen in the previous video that we can also talk about similar matrices and that two matrices, if they're similar, are gonna have similar properties. So I think this gives us a bit of a plan. A diagonal matrix is wonderful and easy and trivial to work with. But then I could look at what matrices are similar to a diagonal. Because if I know that I've got a matrix that's similar to a diagonal, and that similar matrices carry over a lot of the same properties, like for example, the same eigenvalues, then I could just go and look at the diagonal where it's easy and carry them over to the similar matrix. That's gonna be the big program going forward as we look at a process called diagonalization, where we take a matrix that's not diagonal and we try to diagonalize it.